Each year, scientists, researchers, and everyday people make incredible discoveries, helping us to better understand the world around us. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we'll be taking a look at interesting discoveries. Network of Amazon Villages Modern, advanced, remote laser scanners have revealed a network of ancient villages hidden deep within the Amazon rainforest. Archaeologists did know that there was a series of villages within the Amazon prior to this new research, but the advancement of geodetic technology has allowed us to deepen our knowledge, finding some new information regarding the locations and arrangements of various settlements, as well as the way in which they are organized. These new discoveries have been made through the help of LiDAR scanning technology. This tech has a broad range of uses. You'll find it within your iPhone, but it also has played a key role in archaeological discoveries, such as this one. One researcher on this project, Jose Iriarte, explained that even though equipment, such as satellites, were in place over the area, these roads and villages went undetected by them. This shift away from the classic archaeological techniques, namely excavation, has been a time saver, saving the need to physically dig and clear out these sites. The LiDAR sensors had been mounted on helicopters which scoured the sky, covering the area containing these villages, roads and settlements. These connections save money, time and labour of an excavation, despite this being the sturdy go-to archaeological method. This new equipment provides excellent opportunities for areas that may not be particularly accessible on foot. The new groundbreaking research that has followed since the employment of the latest technology is the dating of these villages. These settlements have been determined to date back between AD 1300 to 1700 and are seemingly positioned according to the stars, as they hold a strong resemblance to what is referred to as Native American space. Each village appears to be centred around what has been referred to as mounds. These villages appear to have anywhere between 3 and 32 mounds, some reaching 20 metres in length and 3 metres in height. Some of these have maintained a rounded shape, whilst others appear to be rectangular, increasing the questions about these mounds. Despite comparisons with other villages with mounds, we remain uncertain as to their purpose. Some have suggested they were simply homes. Some have suggested they were reserved for members of the community of great importance. Other explanations have included suggestions that they may be a religious establishment or it has been said that these mounds could even be cemeteries. The LiDAR technology has also found roads connecting each of these villages. The majority of these settlements had at least four roads, main roads and secondary minor roads heading both north and south. As of yet, 36 villages have been surveyed. There has been a great discrepancy regarding the distance between each one, with some being miles apart and others just three kilometers away. The questions that have been raised after this discovery may lead to physical excavations to try and solve some of the mysteries we have been left with. We are struggling to piece together the puzzle, with too much of a gap in each piece of history. Now we know that an excavation may help to complete these unanswered questions. Whilst these helicopter scans are useful, we have to consider this preliminary research. The LiDAR technology has allowed us to locate and map out certain structures in dense, difficult to read areas, but there's still plenty of research left to go before we can find the answers to our questions. Mysterious Siberian Craters Batagaika is not the only crater to have appeared in the Siberian permafrost in recent history. In fact, during the past few years, scientists have discovered at least seven mysterious craters deep in the Siberian tundra. While some initially believed them to be the works of aliens, meteorites, or even explosions from secret weapons testing, scientists studying the large holes have determined that they likely stem from the same cause as their sister crater, climate change. The seven holes in the permafrost were discovered in a virtually deserted region of Siberia known as the end of the world, and are, on average, around one kilometer across. 
Because the region is so uninhabited, the seven craters were mostly discovered by using video and satellite footage, and scientists assume that there could be dozens more in isolated areas that have yet to be discovered. Although these mysterious caverns have been determined to be caused by climate change, much like Batagaika, the two are very different. The seven craters were all discovered in northwest Siberia, in an area called Yamalo Ninetsky, that is rich in natural underground energy sources such as methane. Researchers and scientists believe that it is this methane which is responsible for the craters as it erupts from the permafrost much like a volcano, leaving the gigantic chasms behind. As the northern environment continues to heat up as a result of global warming, the underground permafrost that has been frozen solid for thousands of years begins to thaw, releasing methane gas under the surface and gradually creating an immense amount of pressure that continues to build until it cannot be contained any longer and explodes through the surface, leaving behind gaping holes. Because of the remote location, there are no cities or humans around to hear the explosions, and the craters are discovered much later. Once they appear, there is a space of about two to three years where scientists must discover and study them before they fill with water and turn into small lakes. Once they are discovered, experts must study the holes carefully before they fill up to try to determine what danger they might pose, especially as the permafrost continues to warm and the methane explosions move steadily southward. Methane is highly volatile and flammable, and there are several gas deposits dangerously near some of the craters. Although the craters have only appeared in remote and uninhabited areas so far, if an explosion were to occur underneath a city or near a gas deposit, the results would no doubt be incredibly lethal. However, for now, scientists have no idea how to contain the spread of the explosions, or even to determine how likely they are to spread. They must continue to find and study the craters as they appear and attempt to understand and thus diminish the danger of continued global warming in the delicate permafrost of Siberia. Sinkhole in Mexico Siberia is not the only region to experience massive holes suddenly appearing in the earth. Santa Maria Zacatepec, a town in Puebla, Mexico, not far from Mexico City, experienced this very thing in late May of 2021, when a massive sinkhole suddenly opened up in the earth. While at first the hole was less than 5 meters in diameter, in the span of only a few days it expanded to almost 70 meters. As it grew, layers of the previously stable and solid earth collapsed downward, and the massive pit rapidly began to fill with water that poured in from all sides. Because the crater was so massive and grew so quickly, spectators and locals were drawn to the area, but police quickly cordoned it off as they realized how fast it was expanding. However, as they had no idea what geological event might have caused such a large expanse of ground to give way, experts are treating the situation as a matter of enormous risk, according to Puebla State Governor Miguel Barbosa. Until they can determine what could have caused this phenomenon, the risks that it could pose are largely unknown, and Barbosa emphasized that public safety remains a number one priority in dealing with the situation. The sinkhole initially formed right outside of the nearby town, a short distance from civilization, but as its size began to increase, so did the amount of danger it posed. Currently, a home on the outskirts of the sinkhole is in jeopardy of falling into it if the expansion does not slow. The Sanchez family, who was evacuated for their own safety, reported hearing a thunderous, booming noise. They never imagined that the cause would be a sinkhole filled with bubbling, rushing water so near their home, threatening to swallow it up at any moment. Although the true cause of this particularly massive sinkhole is still being investigated, sinkholes are usually created when flowing groundwater below the surface begins to wash away the rock and earth below ground. This creates an empty pocket of air that gradually gets bigger and bigger as the groundwater continues to circulate, unbeknownst to those walking around on seemingly stable earth above. Eventually, the space becomes too large to support the surface and it collapses in a sudden rush. 
Larger sinkholes, like the one that appeared in Mexico, are usually influenced by drilling or other human activities like building or mining that cause instability underground. As officials begin to stabilize the scene in Mexico and determine the extent of the immediate danger posed to those living nearby, the underlying cause of this particular sinkhole will likely become evident in time. The New Evidence of Human Habitation at Pangaea Sadi Cave Excavations at the Pangaea Sadi Cave site in Kenya have uncovered evidence of long-term human occupancy spanning the Middle Stone Age to the Iron Age. Beginning 67,000 years ago, this evidence demonstrates incremental shifts in cultural, technological and symbolic developments, but the area was occupied for 78,000 years in total. There is no indication that humans migrated over coastal superhighways. The Pangaea Sadi cave site, approximately 15 kilometers from the modern coast, was excavated and investigated by researchers from the Max Planck Institute for the Science of Human History. Carefully prepared for the Middle Stone Age, stone toolkits were found in deposits dating back to 78,000 years ago. But the recovery of small artifacts beginning at 67,000 years ago shows a distinct shift in technology to the later Stone Age. According to a press release, the shrinking of stone implements may indicate changes in hunting tactics and behavior. However, there is a mix of technological developments in Pangaea Sadi layers from around 67,000 years ago to after 67,000 years ago, and no drastic break in behavior can be observed at any time arguing against the cognitive or cultural revolutions postulated by certain archaeologists. Furthermore, no significant break in human habitation occurs during the 74,000-year-old Toba volcanic supereruption, bolstering claims that the so-called volcanic winter did not result in the near extinction of human populations. Even though hints of increased occupation intensity from 60,000 years ago suggest populations were growing in size, the deep archaeological sequence of the Pangaea Sadi cave has yielded a fascinating new cultural record that demonstrates long-term cultural complexity. Carved bones, ostrich eggshell beads, seashell beads, and worked clay are among the objects discovered. Pangaea Sadi is home to Kenya's oldest bead, which dates back 65,000 years. Beads were most typically created using shells that were obtained from the coast around 33,000 years ago. While this shows that people were in contact with the coast, there is little indication of regular subsidence utilization of marine resources. After 25,000 years, ostrich eggshell beads became increasingly popular, and after 10,000 years, coastal shell use resumed. Carved bone, carved tusk, a decorated bone tube, a small bone point, and modified clay fragments were discovered in levels dated from 48,000 to 25,000 years ago. Despite the fact that they are indicative of behavioral complexity and symbolism, their sporadic occurrence in the cave sequence refutes a paradigm for a behavioral or cognitive revolution at any one period. The discovery of the Pangaea Sadi cave will undoubtedly revolutionize archaeologists' perspectives and preconceptions, according to Dr. Nicole Boyvin, Project Principal Investigator and Director of the Department of Archaeology at the Max Planck Institute for the Science of Human History. Dr. Patrick Roberts, group leader of the Stable Isotopes Lab, explained, Occupation in a tropical forest grassland setting adds to our knowledge that our species lived in a variety of habitats in Africa. Professor Michael Petraglia writes, The discoveries at Pangaea Sadi cast doubt on notions concerning the usage of beaches as a kind of superhighway that funneled migrating humans out of Africa and across the Indian Ocean Rim. Viking Village Discovered in the Norwegian Mountains As recently as 2021, a breakthrough dating back to the Viking Age has been made, after the remains of a settlement were uncovered on a quiet stretch of mountain. Over the past few years, the Secrets of the Ice Project, organized by Inlandet County, has revealed breaking news and headline-worthy findings. This has allowed archaeological sites to be examined and investigated, 
especially when they are at risk of being damaged, rendering much of the possible research useless as a result of melting glaciers. When glacier archaeologists took to the mountains in 2020, they found a lost mountain pass that was dated back to the Viking Age, though this left us with more questions than it had answered. It is already established that Vikings live by the ocean or the fjord to allow for quick access to the water. When the Lendbreen Mountain Pass was found, with no written documentation, it raised lots of questions as to how and why it was there. There were plenty of sled, animals and household remains along the path, but still with little information as to why Lendbreen Pass walks away from the water. What use did it have in the Viking Age? The logical way to answer these questions was to simply follow the path. Initial speculation saw ideas such as pastures, farms and long-distance travellers using this pass, though the true discovery was perhaps much more exciting. Lars Peeler reveals that the team made their way to a lost Viking settlement. They moved through summer farms and found paths well worn into the land from people and animals, though it took an unexpected detour from the expected route as the path progressed. It was Ryder Marstein, a local resident who practiced archaeology as a hobby, who discovered the remains of buildings. Upon the first survey, 21 structures were recorded. Peeler stated that their outer walls were visible as low embankments, and small tests with an auger centrally in the ruins revealed charcoal in the ground, perhaps from hearths. These technical terms to the layman amongst us combine to create a classically historical appearance. Small test excavations allowed the team to confirm that it was indeed walls from former houses that had been found. All the time samples placed the structures between 750 and 1150, the near entirety of the Viking Age. The next step in this exciting research opportunity is to continue to explore the area, looking for more answers to the questions we continue to find, hopefully whilst the glaciers remain intact. The mountains can be home to many discoveries and you never know what you might find. From human remains, to the remains of a village, to ancient mysteries we have still not figured out, the mountains continue to hide plenty of secrets. But what do you make of these recent discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. Please help us grow this community by liking and subscribing to our channel, and thank you for watching.